Hi friends, I decided to sit out here by the lake this afternoon, have a little chat. It's a beautiful day here on the north shore of Lake Chapala, Ajijic, Jalisco, Mexico. 79 degrees, a gentle breeze coming off of the lake. Beautiful day. The horse is enjoying all of the new greenery and the beginning here of the monsoon season. Thunderheads forming on the other side of the lake, getting ready for our evening monsoon thunderstorm show. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Well, what's on my mind today? Mostly what's on my mind today is all of the wonderful and complimentary comments that you all have left for me on my YouTube channel. I really enjoy reading your comments, and I appreciate that. Uh, I wanted to start out today by talking about my friend Miles, who has a podcast. It's called The Unconstrained Podcast, and you can find it um, anywhere you look for podcasts. Just Google The Unconstrained Podcast. Miles is a guy in his 50s who's facing something that I know a lot of my subscribers are facing. Uh, you're uh, at that stage in your life where you're thinking about retirement and getting close to it. If you're in your 20s or 30s and you're a little farther away from it, maybe you're smart enough to be thinking about it anyway. But if you're in your 50s or late 50s or 60s, you're definitely thinking about it. And Miles's podcast is his mental journey through that process of thinking about how is he going to make it work. Um, Miles is an interesting guy. He moved from um, Australia, immigrated to the United States in his 20s, and uh, became successful financially, uh, moved to Phoenix. And now he's developing a property in Mexico. So his journey and the journey that he envisions and the reasons that he envisions doing it. Uh, when I started listening to his podcasts, it was like, well, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 76. 20 years ago, I was thinking the same things he's thinking and made the decision to do what he's envisioning doing for a lot of the same reasons. So anyway, I thought it would be valuable for those of you who are um, faithful uh, subscribers to my channel to go and check out the Unconstrained podcast. I think you'll find it interesting, entertaining, and especially enlightening if you're at that point in your life where retirement is on the horizon. Well, I said in the beginning that I was appreciative of all the very nice comments you get on uh, your YouTube channel when you're a creator like me. Not all of the comments are, are always nice. And I've spoken about this before in terms of a comment really doesn't define me when it's talking about me, and it certainly doesn't define Mexico when they're talking about the bad things of Mexico. They only define the opinion of the guy who wrote the comment. So anyway, um, I, when I get these kind of comments, sometimes I find them highly amusing. And I had one that I wanted to talk about today because I, in fact, did find it highly amusing. I'm going to get it out of my iPad so that I can quote it accurately, and I'll be right back. I found it. Uh, there's an old saying that you shouldn't shoot the messenger. And I looked up the derivation of that term. It comes from Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. And... What happened was that Antony was unfaithful to Cleopatra, and so somebody was telling her about this, the messenger. 
And she was, of course, highly annoyed that Antony had been unfaithful, so she was threatening the messenger with using his eyes as balls to play with. And the messenger uh, complained and said, I'm just the messenger. I didn't cause the unfaithfulness. Uh, Don't blame me. And so today we have the saying, don't shoot the messenger. Uh, Not everybody liked hearing that the lake water in Lake Chapala wasn't as bad as they thought. Lake Chapala suffers a hangover from years ago. In the 1980s, Lake Chapala was, in fact, the most polluted lake in the world, according to people who study those kinds of things. But things have happened in the last 30 years. Um, One of the things that happened is that um, in 2006, and 2006 is about the last definitive study of the great pollution of Lake Chapala. What happened in 2006 is that there was a hurricane in the Pacific and a hurricane in the Atlantic and in the Gulf, and they kind of met up here on the high plateau of... I'm, I'm hearing a boat coming. I hope that's not picking up too bad in the video. These hurricanes met up here on the high plateau of Mexico, and it filled up the lake. When we came here, when we bought this house, it was a half a mile. Well, that might be an exaggeration. A quarter of a mile is not an exaggeration that the water, you had to go a quarter of a mile out before you got to the water. And I've talked about boat rides in Chapala were on the back of a flatbed truck and you never actually got in the water. You just got driven along the lake shore on the back of a flatbed truck as you sat in the boat and never got into the water Uh, because the wake was too shallow. It was at about 15% back in the 1980s. And 15% does two things. First of all, the Lerma River, which comes into the lake, it feeds the lake, The Lerma River was highly polluted, and the lake was at 15%, which increased the toxicity of the lake by extreme concentration of the um, uh, uh, industrial waste coming in from the Lerma River and the agricultural runoff. Well, in 2006, the lake filled up. in 2000, and I think it was, I think it was like four years ago, and you can go back and see this in my videos. The water was 20 feet from my seven foot seawall here. Anyway, um, the lake filled up, diluted the pollution. So that's one thing. <clears throat> Another thing that happened is that the federal government under pressure from the citizens of Mexico who depend upon this water, and especially Guadalajara, which is um, uh, the metropolitan area is between five and six million people, and it's the second largest metropolitan area in Mexico after Mexico City. A lot of people are complaining because Lake Chapala is the drinking water for Guadalajara. So there has been um, attention by the federal government paid to the quality of the water in Lake Chapala. And I'm not here to say it's perfect, but they've uh, built many, many uh, sewage pleat treatment plants in the Lerma River. The Lerma River is about, I think it's 470 kilometers. So like 400, 350 to 400 miles long. It starts over by Mexico City, uh, by a town called Toluca, and it comes all the way north to Lake Chapala and feeds Lake Chapala. That's what, that's where Lake Chapala gets its water. And the level of the lake has very little to do with the rain here at Lake Chapala. It has to do with the rain in those 350 miles south of here being collected by the Lerma River and its tributaries and then running into Lake Chapala. And that's where the pollution came from. And back in the 80s, it was 
terrible. The problem is that the internet still retains all of that old information about Lake Chapala. And many people, when I say Lake Chapala isn't as bad as you thought, have to object to that. And if you don't like the message, what do you do? You shoot the messenger. <laughs> so here's the shot I got this week. This is the gospel according to Philip Fernandez. Hi, Philip, if you're watching. <laughs> uh, this is how he shot the messenger. Because he didn't like what I said about the water quality of Lake Chapala. This long-winded, oft times guilty as charged, low information. Now, you have to understand that when people leave comments like this, they're comparing, they're not really talking about me, they're talking about themselves, they're comparing us. So apparently he believes that he has more information than me. Opinionated, I am absolutely opinionated, and my opinion is that the water in Lake Chapala is not as bad as you think if you read all of the old crap on the internet. Misinformed. Well, maybe, maybe not. Person has no business making videos. Well, Philip, I'm probably going to keep making videos, but you're free not to watch them. He stated, I stated, that glyphosate, glyph glyphosate was sprayed 10 years ago, and people think it is still evaporating from the lake. Well, yes, I did state that. And my evidence for that is that comments I get on my YouTube tube ch people when I did the lake thing, I got those comments. People stated that. And I've had people in person express their concern about that Roundup sprayed in the lake being detrimental to their health by breathing the breezes that come off of the lake. I stand by my statement that people have told me that. Now, I did describe it as a myth. I don't believe that. But people have told me that. I don't see how you can argue with the fact that people have told me that. The rest of the sentence is, evaporating from the lake, when in fact glyphosate and pesticides flow into the lake daily, from the Lerma River. It is absolutely true that pesticides and fertilizers flow into the lake daily from the Lerma River. But it's not bad like it used to be. It's better than it used to be. Also, I'm doing water tests here towards the west end of Lake Chapala. The Lerma River runs in 50 miles from here to the east. Maybe that's a difference. I didn't say the whole lake. All I said was the water that I tested in that test tube. Also, glyphosate is not a fertilizer. He sort of misstated that. I'll, I'll let him go on that one. When he says glyphosate, he's conflating fertilizer runoff and Roundup weed killer. I'm pretty sure, and again, I may be misinformed, or I may have low information, but I don't think that farmers 350 miles from here are spraying Roundup on their tomatoes, because that's not how it works. It's not running in from the Lerma River, the Roundup. <laughs> Another thing that gets uh, 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 conflated, that was a word I used, I like that word, is that people look on the internet and there are two rivers involved in Lake Chapala. One is the Lerma River, which comes from the south, runs into the lake, and years ago used to be really much more polluted than it is today. The other one 
is called the Santiago, but the real name of it is the Lerma Santiago. And people read that the Lerma Santiago is highly polluted. And in fact, it is highly polluted, but it doesn't run into Lake Chapala. It runs out of Lake Chapala, goes north past Guadalajara, and becomes extremely polluted again because of the industrial waste from Guadalajara. And I've seen the Santiago River, the Lerma Santiago River, north of Guadalajara. And when it runs over a rock, you get this ugly, smelly, terrible yellow foam from the industrial waste in the Santiago River that runs then on north to and west to the Pacific Ocean. But that's running out of Lake Chapala. It's not running into Lake Chapala. And the, and the heavy industrial race, uh, waste that they conflate with coming from Lake Chapala is actually produced in Guadalajara, 45 kilometers north of Lake Chapala. <laughs> well, anyway... I said I'd get amused by comments like that. Thank you, Philip. You gave me something to talk about today. Well, what else are we going to talk about today? That's probably enough of that crap. <laughs> going out to take a picture of today's harvest from the garden. This is one of our gardens. That's a uh, basil there that's being attacked by a cucumber. I've got to pick cucumbers today. That's a carrot. Swiss chard. A spaghetti squash over there. Those are beets. I planted some onions, but... Oh! Dang! This is the first time I'm seeing this. I'm barefooted. Please excuse me. I'm getting excited. But I have to go kind of slow, because I am barefooted. I started to say I planted onions, but they never came up. But look at this. Onions! Hmm. Here's another spaghetti squash that's coming along. And then over here, uh, butternut squash and cucumbers. See if we can find one here. There's one. It's a butternut squash. And there's lots of them in there. And cucumbers. Well, here's a butternut squash and a cucumber together. Let's check that one there. That's big enough. I'm just going to take that one with me. There we go. First of all, we have cucumbers. And I brought a spoon out here. You can see how big this was. Um... We had four of them. I and the maid and Lynn ate one, and then we gave two to the maid to take home. And what I brought the spoon out here for, though, is to show you this. This is an, a, a spaghetti squash. And I've had several of them, but I have never had one this big. This is like twice as big as any spaghetti squash I've ever even seen. It's amazing. And then there's this. I've been watching it, and I thought it was a turnip, and I didn't plant it. And it might have been from a garden in years past, and the seed just finally decided to go, but it's a radish. But have you ever seen a double radish? I'm not making this up. It's a double radish. It grew, and then it decided, oh, let's grow some more. Um... Maybe I should uh, have let it go to seed and sell the seeds as a way to save space in the garden. Interesting. Uh, if that makes more sense to somebody else than me, leave me a comment. Anyway, that's today's harvest. We'll be eating squash tonight. Well, that's the radish. I cleaned it up and ate a slice of it, and boy, is it strong, but it's definitely a radish. And this is the spaghetti squash before I clean the seeds out. Huge. Anyway, did you uh, enjoy your bite of the radish? Yes, I did.
I always loved the radish sandwich. Salt and pepper and a little mayo. I never heard of a radish sandwich. Huh? My mother used to eat them. Salt and pepper and a little mayo? You want to make a sandwich out of that one? Yeah. I don't want to eat it now. Okay. Going to eat squash for dinner? Yes. All righty. And lunch. What? And lunch. And lunch. <laughs> yeah. Half of that will be more than enough for dinner, and there'll be some left over. Yes, sir. So how do you like it? Do you like it with uh, real butter and brown sugar? Yeah. Okay. But I can't believe it's not butter. It's okay, too. All righty. I'm going to go cook. Okay. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.